Okay, so let's do some isotope examples. Now remember that isotopes are atoms with identical atomic numbers, but different numbers of neutrons. Okay, so let's also remind ourselves of the elemental symbol, so ways that we represent isotopes. And so, I'll write that down. And basically, here's our element. So element X, the atomic mass, we always put on the upper left side. And then sometimes you'll see the atomic number, Z, down here in the corner. Often, we'll leave that off because the elemental symbol and Z mean the same thing, so it's redundant. Another thing that we're going to do an example for while we're at it is sometimes these species have a charge. Like, let's say it's missing an electron, so we have a cation or has an extra electron, so we have an anion. So, that, so the charge would be up in the corner if there is one, a non-zero charge. Okay, so let's start with an example for neon. Okay, so here's one of the isotopes of neon, 21 neon, all right. And what we're going to do is figure out how many protons, neutrons and electrons for this species. Okay? So we want to figure that out. Alright, so first thing we're going to do is look on the periodic table and we're going to find neon. And from there we can get the atomic number. So it's going to be at the top. And the atomic number for neon is 10. We get that from the periodic table. So that's Z. And remember that the atomic number is equal to the number of protons for this atom. Okay, so we have 10 protons, and we see that we don't have a charge here. And so for a neutral atom, the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. So now we know that we have 10 electrons also. Okay, so how do we figure out our neutrons? And this is where we have to use our atomic mass, A. Okay, so this is A up here. And our number of neutrons is always going to be A minus Z. Okay, so that's going to be 21 minus 10. So we have 11 neutrons. Okay, so that's how you would do this particular species. Now, what if we decided to make this an ion? Okay, so what if I had given you neon plus instead? So 21 neon with a plus one charge. All right, what would change? Well, the number of protons, it's still neon, so that would still be 10, okay? The number of neutrons wouldn't change either, because it doesn't matter if it's charged. We still just take the mass number and subtract off the atomic number, so the number of neutrons is still going to be 11. But what is going to change is the number of electrons, of course. So we started with 10 electrons. We took one away, and so we're going to have fewer electrons than protons. That'll give us a positive charge, so we have 10 minus 1, that's the charge on there, and we're going to have 9 electrons for this guy. Okay, so let's do a few more, a little bit harder ones. So I'm going to go to the next slide and write down a few more. Okay, so let's look at gadolinium. So that's there's kind of an exotic guy. Okay. And this is gadolinium-158. All right, and this is the most abundant isotope for gadolinium. Okay, so pause it, take a few seconds, and figure out the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons. And remember, you're going to have to use your periodic table. Okay, so let's go ahead and figure it out. So the first thing we do is we go to the periodic table, and we find out that Z is 64 for gadolinium, okay? And so now we know the number of protons. It's always the same. 
So the atomic number is 64, so that means we have 64 protons. We also notice that there is not a charge on this species, right? So no charge, so that means the number of protons and the number of electrons are equal. And then the last thing we have to do is figure out our number of neutrons. So we're going to take our mass number up here, okay, 158, and we're going to subtract off our atomic number, and we are going to end up with 94 neutrons for this guy. All right. So let's give him a negative charge this time and compare. So I'm going to give him a 3 minus charge. Just make that up there. Okay. And so what's going to change? So here's our protons, neutrons, and electrons. All right. So as in the previous example, just turning it into an ion doesn't change anything having to do with protons or neutrons. Those are going to stay exactly the same. The only thing that changes is electrons. So we still have 64 protons and we still have 94 neutrons. Alright, so now what about electrons? So we started with 64 and now we have 3 extra. So that's where that negative charge is coming from. So 64 plus 3 because that's our charge. So we're adding electrons, so we end up with 64, 67 electrons, excuse me. Okay, all right, so let's do another example. How about bismuth? Okay, 209. I'm going to go ahead and give this guy a 2 plus charge. Okay, all right, so here's bismuth. So I'll pause it and give it a try. Figure out the protons, neutrons, and electrons. Okay, so remember the first thing you're going to do is go to the periodic table and find bismuth and figure out what Z is. And we see that it's 83. Okay, and so the number of protons is going to be the same as Z. So that's 83. All right, so now we want to figure out our neutrons. So we're going to take our atomic mass, subtract off our protons, and we're going to end up with 126 neutrons. All right, now electrons, it's not the same as the number of protons because this species has a charge. And it's a 2 plus charge, so that means we're subtracting off electrons. And so we're going to take 83 electrons, and we're going to take off two of them. That's how we get our 2 plus charge. We're going to end up with 81 electrons. Okay, so let's do one more example on the next slide. Okay, so let's look at 195 platinum. So use this one as a little quiz. Pause it and give it a try. Okay? All right, so protons, neutrons, electrons. Okay? And so we're going to go to the periodic table. We're going to find platinum on the periodic table. And we're going to find out the Z is equal to 78. Okay? And the number of protons is always equal to the atomic number, so we have 78 protons. And we look here and we see that there is no charge on this guy, so that means we have 78 electrons. All right, and the last thing we're going to do is take A and subtract off Z. So we're going to take our atomic mass minus our atomic number. So we have 195 minus 78, and we are going to end up with 117 neutrons, okay? All right, so good job.